Uh, thanks. So uh, uh, this is work with uh, Noel Golovich, uh, who is an undergrad at Harvard. He's a very bright uh, undergrad. Hopefully he'll be uh, more present in this community. Um, uh, and Ohad Shamir is a very bright uh, non-undergrad. Non um, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and we're going to study a, a sample complexity of neural networks. And part of the motivation is this uh, persistent belief within the more general ML community that somehow the uh, neural networks are magical because they're over-parameterized. And of course, we know that it's not the number of parameters that matters, but some uh, uh, perhaps other measures of complexity. And so th that's the goal to study these measures. Okay, so uh, the setup is like that. Uh, like, like that, uh, um, we have D layers, um, uh, matrices W1 through WD, and uh, for simplicity, just the ReLU activations coordinate-wise. Uh, we have a, uh, so D is the depth of the network, uh, H is the uh, max dimension of any of the matrix, including the input dimension, um, and M is going to be the sample size. Okay, so that's the notation. Um, and uh, again, uh, uh, the, the, the aim is to study how norms of matrices W1 through WD uh, uh, govern the sample complexity of uh, neural networks or the capacity of uh, uh, the class of neural networks. Okay, so uh, uh, we typically study uh, uh, the question of generalization through the lens of Radamacher complexity. The, the Radamacher averages, uh, empirical Radamacher averages are defined as the expected supremum over uh, coin flips, the worst correlation of functions in the class on the data with random signs. And uh, it's well known that this object is classically related as both upper and lower bound uh, to the uniform deviations of empirical and expected uh, quantities over the class. And this class H will be uh, uh, neural networks with some complexity bounded, such as product of the uh, norms of the uh, weight matrices. So uh, what do we know? Well, uh, there is one neural network we understand well, and that's the linear, uh, linear uh, case. Uh, this is a very simple neural network um, uh, where we bound the Euclidean norm of uh, W by, let's say, B, and it's a one-line proof to show that the Radamacher averages in this case behave just as just one Jensen inequality, behave like B over square root of M. And, and this is independent of the dimension of the space, independent of the number of parameters. And so the question is, can we get such clean results for uh, neural networks that do not depend on any other uh, um, uh, uh, things such as the depth or the width of the network and so forth. Okay, so what is known? Well, this is the one that people seem to keep appealing to, but we know it's very loose. It's the VC bound. Uh, if, if you're over-parameterized, this is going to be loose. Um, uh, uh, you can also think of uh, neural nets as Lipschitz functions or a subset of Lipschitz functions, and then uh, uh, Radamacher averages are going to behave like non-parametrically, m to the 1 over the input dimension with the Lipschitz constant, which is just the product of operator norms. Um, uh, more recent results by Neshabur and Cerebro uh, get the product of the Frobenius norms uh, with an unfortunate uh, exponential factor in, in the depth of the network. Um, and uh, more, more recently, uh, uh, Bartlett, uh, Foster, and Telgarski showed uh, the product of operator norms as the governing measure of complexity. Um, but with an extraneous factor, which is at least uh, d-cubed. Uh, uh, d is, the, again, the depth of the uh, network. So the question is whether uh, we can remove these uh, extraneous factors uh, like that. So uh, uh, is depth independence even possible for uh, some neural networks? Well, uh, obviously, it should be possible for at least some neural networks. You take this one-layer neural network, which is just uh, 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 the previous example with a, a ReLU on top and then uh, append it with a, a thin neural network, then clearly by positive homogeneity, nothing changes. We, we still have a data, uh, the depth independent result. So the question is how, how far can this be pushed and, and can we prove a more general uh, result in this direction? Um, let's start with lower bounds. Um, if the only thing you do is you control the product of operator norms of the network, then uh, uh, it's impossible to avoid the dependence on the width of the network. So that's a, a, an easy lower bound. So at least some dependence on the dimension of the network is unavoidable. Um, if you uh, extend this to p Schatten, so Schatten is just the LP norm on the singular uh, values. Um, if you only bound the product of Schatten norms of the network, then uh, uh, you still have some dependence, which disappears at Schatten p equals to 2, which is also known as the Frobenius norm. 
So let's try to see if for Frobenius norm we can get a completely clean result. Um, and indeed, this is one of the kind of one of the main results is that you do get uh, a completely depth independent or and, and the width independent results, except you pay for uh, for the rate in this rather macro complexity. Uh, we're only able to get m to the one over four, and it's an open question whether one can get the clean result with the linear networks, uh, um, uh, as an example, uh, which would be b over square root of m. Um, we can also get uh, a very, well, no, I don't know if it's very mild, but it's, it's a mild dependence only square root of uh, the depth and keep the rate at, uh, at m. So uh, the minimum of these uh, is, is the currently uh, best known, at least to me. Um, okay, so what are the details? Um, there are two technical contributions, and, and I will spend one minute on each. Um, the first one is really technical, and, and, and this is something that um, uh, um, is it, it, really the technicality that uh, uh, the way that I've been teaching in, in machine learning course, when you consider sample complexity of neural networks, you do peeling, and at each stage you lose this factor of two, and that's how we've been doing it all the time. Uh, you do contraction, and then this power of two accumulates. And so uh, effectively, if you do, uh, you do telegram contraction at a different step, it turns out that you can avoid this exponential dependence. It was purely a, a technical thing. And second thing is to get completely independent uh, of depth um, dependence. Uh, this requires some kind of specification, which I will describe in a second. Okay, so uh, 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 what is this trick, the algebraic trick? Uh, it's, it's roughly like that, right? So you go to a, a soft max for those who know how the usual proof goes. Um, typically you peel and you apply contraction to, to this object, but uh, if instead you go to soft max and you apply a slightly more uh, a general version of Lidu Telegrand uh, contraction from, from their book in 1992, I think, um, uh, then this exponential, the, 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 the two to the d factor only accumulates inside of the logarithm and then you take the log and then you get a uh, square root of the dimension, a uh, square root of the depth, okay? So that's, that's a very uh, kind of simple thing and uh, I will definitely incorporate it in my course when I teach the, this object, um, uh, subject. So you immediately get from this that if a product of Frobenius norms is bounded by b, then you get just the square root of the depth uh, dependence, so it's almost as clean as the, uh, the uh, linear case. Um, if we uh, have this type of norm, so it's the maximum of the uh, L1 norms of the rows, then um, uh, uh, we can get a, a similar result, and, and one can probably get uh, many more results of this type. It's a very general kind of uh, trick. Okay, so how do we get complete independence of the, uh, of the depth? One minute, okay, good. So what we do is the following. We, we, we take a, a neural net, let's say it goes from bottom up, we pick a row, uh, uh, a, 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 a layer R as a, as a parameter, and then uh, we argue that uh, underneath there must be a, a, a matrix which is relatively close to being rank one with an appropriate uh, quantification, and then we just replace it by rank one matrix. And then we argue that uh, this process doesn't lose much point-wise in the L infinity norm, uh, but then uh, when you look at this, this is just a Lipschitz function composed with a, uh, a neural network of depth R. And so by balancing R and by looking at the rather macro complexity of the composition of a Lipschitz function with uh, the neural network of depth R, we get the result. That's, that's all. Okay. So the summary, uh, these are the first uh, known to us explicit size-independent generalization bounds for standard neural networks. Technique, techniques can be used more generally. Can, you, can get, you can take other results and try to improve them. Uh, we've done that in the paper. Um, uh, Schatten norms are required. Spectral norm is not enough, as that lower bound shows. Uh, and there are many questions. Uh, the obvious one is whether one can get the one over square root of m uh, uh, behavior, or whether this m to the one fourth is uh, is necessary, I don't believe that's the case. Um, uh, uh, clearly, uh, uh, you know, uh, the standard gradient descent uh, is not compatible with this type of uh, uh, product of the norms, so are there any algorithmic implications for this measure of complexity? Um, and and uh, clearly there are many incompatible notions of complexity, some of them data dependent, some of them data independent. Uh, it's not necessarily that one is better than another, uh, but for sure, number of parameters is not the right notion, necessarily. Thank you.
Right, so we have time for a question for Sasha while the other speaker is setting up. Philippe? Uh, you need them to be uh, positive homogeneous and the lip, let's say Lipschitz by one, yeah, contractions. Lipschitz constant otherwise comes out. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah, so, so is, is there some way to kind of just But it's the same it's the same thing for uh, for uh, the linear one, right? If you if you put all ones uh, uh, right the, then the it will be d, right? So you will not get the depth uh, the dimension independent result, right? Here like it's basically won't buy anything like one thing. That's true. That's true. Right. I see, I see, I don't know. That's a good, good question. Okay. Last question, yeah. Yes. What do you advance to come for the Hadamard problem, which is a linear problem when the target is very sparse? I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious because usually pretty centized algorithms don't, can't handle that case at all. Sure. All right, so let's thank the speaker again.